Hello, you're watching PC Jack. With the launch of the RTX 50 series, you're going to find a lot of people aiming to get their hands on a lot of the next gen cards, including the 5080 or even the 5090. But I thought I would do things a little bit differently for this year. That's why today, we're going to be taking a close look at the RTX 4070. Very recently, I built myself an ITX system in the Fractal Terra using the Ryzen 5 7600 and I wanted a brand new GPU to pair with it that was also low powered and pretty efficient when it came to gaming. So the 4070 seemed like a pretty good shout for that. But what I thought we would do today is take a look at a couple of games I play at 1440p and see just how well this card runs. And also, since we're using an ITX system, I may get my hands a little dirty and try out some undervolting to see just how efficient this card can be. So, with all that out of the way, Let's get into it. So, our first game we're going to check out is going to be Dead Space Remake. And this is one that's going to be pretty interesting to test out. But for a bit of warning first is that, obviously I'm testing this in my ITX system. And the temperatures so far on the RTX 4070 are looking pretty fine to be fair. There is a bit of fan noise, but we've been hitting about 71, 72C max, maybe 73. The temperatures on our CPU are a little higher than you would normally like, however, we are in a rather constrained system, and this game does tend to be quite CPU intensive, as you'll see in our CPU usage. So, I wouldn't pay too much attention to our CPU, it's more so that we're going to be focused on our GPU performance. However, the one thing you will notice quite a lot with Dead Space Remake is a lot of traversal stutter, which is impacted by our CPU choice. For our video sense, you can see we're pretty much maxed out at 1440p. The only thing I've made sure to include is NVIDIA DLSS set to quality, and uh, it just gives us a nice little bump. I've also downloaded a particular DLSS version, which I can't quite remember which one it was, which helped improve for some ghosting with this game. So if we take a look at how well this game is running, we can see we're sitting around 140 odd on our average FPS, which is great to see. Our 1% lows are looking not too bad, around 81, but it's our 0.1% lows, which really indicate that traversal stutter that we see in the game. Now you could potentially improve that with a better performing CPU than the one I have, but uh, again, that traversal stutter may still be present, but if you're running with something a little more powerful like a 7800X3D or a 9800X3D, that could remedy the issue somewhat. Let's see if we can actually shoot something. As you can see, when we're going into new areas, our 0.1% lows really start to struggle. Here's something. Nope. Not quite enough. Whew. We got it. We're good. So next, we're taking a look at Alan Wake 2. And as you can see, we're running the things again at 1440p. We are using DLSS quality just to give us a bit of an extra bump in performance. And we're running everything maxed out with the exception of ray tracing turned off. We'll try it without for a while and then maybe we'll mess around with that just to see how our performance is impacted. But as you can see at the moment we're sitting in the mid 80s for our average FPS with our 1% lows at 78 and our 0.1% lows at 39. Again a little bit indicative of the type of CPU I'm testing with today but overall performance is pretty good. Let's see if we can get a bit more action going on to test things a little better. It still looks pretty good. It's uh, not really struggling too much there, but let's try this out with ray tracing enabled and see exactly how well we fare. So I've just enabled the ray tracing high preset. The one thing I did do though was disable DLSS ray reconstruction because I wanted to get a bit of an idea of how our ray tracing performance is without that enabled. And as you can see, we're not actually doing as bad as I would have expected as we're now sitting around the mid 40s, which not a terrible experience. What sort of difference are we going to be looking at if we enable uh, ray reconstruction? Well, we're seeing a little bit of a boost, so it's taking us up into the 50s. From what I can see, it doesn't look too bad. Definitely a really good pass for Alan Wake. So how about we move on to something else? So next up, we're going to be running Red Dead Redemption 2, and we're running this again at 1440p. And all I've done, I haven't done anything too custom, I just put it at the maximum preset on Ultra and also made sure to have DLSS quality enabled as well. Here we are in game and things are looking pretty good. Uh, we're sitting with an average frame rate at just over 100 FPS. Our 1% lows are in the high 80s and our 0.1% lows are just under 60 or near about, which uh, is absolutely fine in my book. And the game still looks stunning, especially on the Ultra preset we're running. Now, you could take a little further with the settings to get an even higher frame rate or even better image quality, but even this in itself is pretty good. It's not too much of a slouch to run anymore uh, compared to what it used to be. I can remember running this back in the day when it first came out on my RX 580 8GB, and uh, 
it took quite a bit to get that to run very well. And our curiosity, just uh, because we've got so much overhead, let's see how performance is without DLSS enabled. I'm just curious for this one. So switching DLSS off is um, honestly not too much of a difference. I could happily run this game native if I'm being totally honest. And uh, our performance isn't suffering very much at all. In fact, somehow our 0.1% lows are a little higher. But yeah, overall, I would say this one is a total success in itself as well. So lastly, we're going to be taking a look at Returnal. And basically, we've got everything maxed out for this game, including ray tracing on the Epic preset. And the only other thing we've got included on here is uh, DLSS set to quality mode, just to give us a bit more performance. And as you can see, things are looking pretty good so far. We're just in the starting area over here, and our average is sitting around the mid-90s, and our one percent lows are in the mid to high 70s and our 0.1% lows are just sticking around 49 or so. So let's actually play a little bit and see how things look as we get further into the game. So the more we're going through we are seeing our 0.1% lows and 1% lows start to dip a little further but that's going to happen especially with our ray tracing options enabled on here. This game is quite difficult to play while talking so I'm going to try and kill these things and not die. God, you can tell it's been a while since I played this game. I think I'm gonna die, and I've literally just started playing this. Don't kill us straight away, we need to do some benchmarking. Oh. It's been a while since I played this game. Okay, so we're back at the beginning of the game because I have clearly not been practicing Returnal very much. But even still, we're looking very good and the performance was maintaining a decent average around 100 odd FPS, so I can't complain too much. I know a lot of these games on 0.1% lows aren't going to be fantastic, but that is going to be down to the CPU I'm using. But in real use, how noticeable it's going to be is going to be dependent on you, but for me, I don't find it too bad. Uh, but what I would like to get into now is actually some efficiency testing and see if we can actually reduce our temperatures and voltages, as well as power draw, even further. So before we get into some undervolting, I thought the best thing we could do is uh, we'll run a synthetic benchmark like Unigen Heaven 4.0 and we'll just get a rough idea of our performance at stock and then we'll have a mess around with our settings in MSI Afterburner and then we have a decent point of comparison to draw between for our tests. So I'm just going to run the benchmark for Unigen Heaven 4.0, record our score, and then we'll get into some undervolting. Okay, so we've been through the benchmark, and as we can see, our FPS score was 229.2, and our score was 5,774. So we're going to use this as a point of comparison when we get into our undervolting, and we're going to see if there's much difference in the scores after we've finished with our settings. So I've been having a mess around in MSI Afterburner using the Curve Editor, and I've gone for an undervolt around 2600 MHz at 925 millivolts. And so far it seems pretty stable, so we're going to run the benchmark again in Unigen Heaven, and we'll see how things are looking. If you are looking for a bit more of a detailed overview of how to undervolt or even overclock the RTX 4070, then let me know, as uh, I'd be happy to work on a tutorial video for you guys, so let me know down in the comments below what you think. So we've been through the benchmark now and there's not really a massive difference all things considered when it comes to our score as we're sitting at 217.5 and 5,479 which isn't really that far off and the actual reduction in terms of power and temperatures is pretty crazy but the actual difference in terms of power draw and temperatures is quite drastic and really impressive given the level of performance we're still getting out of this card. I ran an undervolt at around 2600 MHz at 925 millivolts, and our peak power draw was around 125 watts with a max temperature of about 64 degrees C, which is very impressive. And I reckon I'd probably run this 24-7 with those settings just to maintain that level of power efficiency. So overall, I'm actually really impressed with the RTX 4070. The level of performance that it's given me at 1440p, which is about what I would expect this card to aim for for most buyers if you're after it. You could potentially delve into some 4K gaming, but you would have to start tinkering with your settings a little bit more. But I don't see any reason why you couldn't get away with it, but for my needs, I personally run an ultra-wide 3440 by 1440 so pretty close to where we were looking for today's testing. I can't complain, and I think this card is pretty worthwhile if you look into that sort of mid-range performance at 1440p, but you are looking to be more considerate when it comes to your power efficiency and... Uh, Maybe even if you are looking to build in a similar case to myself with the Fractal Terra or any sort of SFF build. But that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.